a team of engineers have created a power mushroom. We may be cooking our future source of electricity. Wide-button mushrooms have levels of humidity and temperature that create an ideal environment for bacterial growth. A team from the Stevens Institute of Technology have taken these qualities and turned these mushrooms into hosts of renewable energy. According to their study, published in the paper Nano Journal, the team used 3D printing technology to create a pattern of electrically conductive carbon on the cap of a living mushroom. They then printed cyanobacteria on top of the pattern using a special bio-ink. This bacteria was selected due to its efficiency in converting sunlight to energy. Researchers who participated in the study said it has an internal quantum efficiency of nearly 100%. Exposing mushroom to light triggers cyanobacterial photosynthesis, during which the bacteria releases electrons that are in turn captured by the strips of graphene. According to a news release by the American Chemical Society, the team managed to generate 65 nanoamps of electric energy. I guess we could say mushrooms are both nutritious and energizing? Oh, science, why you gotta be so cool? A tricky experiment. Could antimatter fall upward instead of downward? Scientists at CERN plan to drop antimatter into a vacuum chamber to see if gravity affects antimatter the same way it affects matter. According to New Atlas, antimatter is identical to matter in every way, except that it has a negative charge. If matter and antimatter touch and interact with one another, they cancel each other out and annihilate each other. In the first experiment, scientists plan to conduct an alpha-G experiment in which the researchers will trap anti-hydrogen atoms in a vertical vacuum chamber and test to see what effect gravity has on the atoms. In the second experiment, called a G-bar, anti-hydrogen atoms generated from anti-protons will be subjected to a fall of 20 centimeters to see what effect gravity has on them. Scientists predict that antimatter should fall down like regular matter, but there is a one in a million chance that it could fall up instead. That's exciting. The HOPE Mars mission, also known as Emirates Mars mission, will be the first mission to Mars by any Arab nation if it successfully launches in 2020. According to Khalij Times, the HOPE probe will be hexagonal in shape and structure with a mass of about 1,500 kilograms and 2.37 meters in width and 2.9 meters in height. The spacecraft will also use three 600-watt solar panels to charge its batteries, which will unfold once the probe is in orbit. It will also communicate with Earth via a high-gain antenna. HOPE will be launched from Japan using Mitsubishi's H-2A launcher and will take approximately 200 days to travel to Mars at speeds of up to 40,000 km per hour. The spacecraft will carry a digital camera, an infrared spectrometer, and an ultraviolet spectrometer to gather climate and atmospheric data of Mars and send the images back to Earth. If everything goes according to plan, the probe will arrive on Mars in 2021 and is expected to study the atmosphere of Mars for about two years. China to replace streetlights with an artificial moon. Imagine seeing a full moon every night. Officials in China are planning to launch an illumination satellite in the southwestern city of Chengdu within the next two years. According to Asia Times, the man-made moon will have a reflective coating on its surface to reflect light from the sun. It will also have solar panel-like wings on its surface that can be adjusted for precise lighting. The satellite will reportedly shine eight times brighter than the real moon and could replace streetlights. The artificial moon would be able to light up an area of up to 10 to 80 kilometers in diameter, giving a dusk-like hue to complement the real moon in the sky. Officials in the city hope the artificial moon will bring in more tourists once it's launched. No hand, no problem. An Italian woman has become the first woman to try out the first bionic hand with a sense of touch that can be worn outside a laboratory. Scientists in Rome have unveiled a portable bionic hand which uses sensors and electrodes to restore a sense of touch, trialing the technology on a woman who lost her hand 25 years ago. Sensors on the prosthetic hand detect whether an object being held is hard or soft and send electrical signals to a portable computer. The signals are converted into sensory impulses and sent to electrodes implanted in the upper arm, which then relay it to the brain. The process happens in real time, and the woman claimed she felt the sensation spontaneously as though it was her real hand. 
Unfortunately, she had to give back the prototype once the six-month trial period ended. Scientists are now working on miniaturizing the electronics and making the technology clinically usable. Norway's electric plane Norwegian flyers may be traveling on aircraft like this within the next decade. According to Norwegian government information, the Alpha Electro G2 aircraft has a range of 170 kilometers and can fly for up to one hour. Manufacturer Pipistrol says the aircraft's motor has power of around 50 kilowatts with a 21 kilowatt per hour battery. This is small compared to batteries used by electric cars. Variants of the Tesla Model X electric car use the 75 and 100 kilowatt per hour batteries. Pipistrol says the aircraft can be recharged quickly at customized charging station. The plane was tested this month at Oslo Airport. Carrying two passengers, it weighed 570 kilograms and was airborne for several minutes. Reuters reports the passengers described the experience as cramped, but quieter than a normal aircraft. The country plans to operate domestic flights electric by 2025, with a view to having all electrically powered come 2040. Those with appendicitis may not need surgery. According to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, there is an alternative to patients with appendicitis who don't want to get surgery. In the past, appendicitis was considered a medical emergency, with surgeons removing the appendix immediately as they feared there was a possibility it would burst. However, the researchers found that nearly two-thirds of patients with appendicitis don't have to fear their appendix would burst and can choose to take antibiotics instead. Only 7% of patients who received antibiotics were found to have some kind of complication, with the authors saying the success rate for the antibiotic treatment was almost 64%. However, 36% of the patients eventually needed surgery to remove their appendix. The author of the study says antibiotics instead of surgery is a feasible, viable, and safe option for those who have an uncomplicated appendix, meaning they don't need to worry about their appendix bursting. In an editorial accompanying the study, the deputy editor of the journal said the treatment has a high chance of success, but that the public could also choose to get surgery if they don't want to worry about appendicitis coming back again.